Alright, so in this video, we are now going to start focusing on towers. And the first thing we need to focus on uh, for towers is making them. And behind me is our very first tower that we'll be working with. So it is composed of two meshes that will be in the description for you to download. And this is the general structure of what it should be. So the root game object of the tower should be at the very bottom. This will act as the tower's pivot. So when we place it, we could just use ray casting. And next we have the head pivot, which will be used to rotate our tower's head towards any enemies. And that should be the general structure of uh, your every tower you make for your game. It should have a pivot for the head and for the stand itself. So now let's get on with the scripts that you will need. So first, underneath the player script or the player folder, we're going to create a new C Sharp class, and this will be called Tower Placement. And we're also going to go into our classes folder and create a new folder and call this Towers. And inside of the Towers folder, we're going to create a new C Sharp script and call this Tower Behavior. And there you go, those are the two main classes you will need for uh, placing towers. What we're going to do now is underneath our player game object, we're going to create a new UI of a button. So if we just double click on the button to focus on it, zoom out a bit, and we can call this, uh, for now this will be our test place, since this is really just to help us develop this code. And just set it to a size of 100 by 100. And also don't forget to pivot this at the bottom left corner and offset it by, I guess, 10 by 10. And now if you go into your game view, it should look like this. The button, the button is at the bottom left looking nice and clean. And for the text inside, we're going to insert text, text mesh pro, and import the TMP essentials. And once that is all done, you're going to go to the rec transform and shift alt, press at the bottom right to have it stretch on all corners. There you go, set the font size to around 20, uh, have the alignment go towards the center, set, set the font color to black, and I'll just set the text to place tower. There you go. And now the UI is all set. Now what we're going to do is back on our player object, we're going to take our tower placement class and put it on to our um, player game object. And for our first tower here, we're going to also go into our towers folder in our assets and put the tower behavior on the root uh, object itself. And once that is all set up, we're going to go to our prefabs folder, go to entities, create a new folder and call this towers. And inside this, we're going to put in our basic tower game object. And there you go, our tower is now ready for placement. All right, so now we can just get rid of our basic tower in this scene and quickly clean up the hierarchy and let's get to editing our tower placement script all right so for placing towers we're not going to use the object pulling method since uh, you won't be spawning and uh, destroying towers as often compared to enemies enemies will be spawning a lot and dying a lot so object pulling is a necessity for enemies but for towers i prefer not to use object pulling since uh, whenever i use object pulling uh, I like to go off of ID, an IDing system, and uh, it can get really messy uh, when it comes to IDing towers. Uh, you know, you have their upgrades, you know, you have a lot of things to worry about. So we're just going to stick with uh, prefabs and instantiation and destroying of towers for the tower placement. So the first thing we're going to do is create a public void underneath our main mono behavior functions, and we're going to call this uh, set tower to place. And this will take in a game object to represent our tower. And after that, we're going to create a private game object variable to store our current placing tower. So we can set that current placing tower. And within our set to tower to place function, we're going to set our current placing tower to instantiate uh, the tower object. And we're going to set the position to vector3.0. And we're going to set the, uh, the rotation to its identity. Now, once this function is called and we have our current placing tower, in our update function, we're going to check if our current placing tower uh, does not equal to null, so we can prevent errors from happening. And inside of here, we're going to modify the position of our current placing tower based off of 
uh, array that is shot from our camera to our mouse um, in screen space to world space so we can uh, screen space and now what we're going to do is modify the position based off of array that our camera is shooting uh, based off of our uh, mouse position uh, into world space uh, so we can place objects around the world so to get this ray what we have to do is ray call this cam ray equals and before we continue with that we're going to need a reference to our players camera so below our current placing tower variable we're going to create a so above our current placing tower variable we're going to create a serialized field attribute that is connected to a private camera reference and call this player camera and what we're going to do with this reference is next to our array after the equal sign we're going to do player camera dot screen point to array and inside of here we're going to pass in our input dot mouse position and now with this ray we're going to do if physics dot ray cast and we pass in our cam ray after this we do out ray cast hit and call this our hit info and for the layer mask we're not going to put a layer mask and we're going to put in a range so we can set our max distance to I guess a hundred units and after that we can just finish up our if statement and there you go now inside this if statement what we're going to do is set our current placing tower dot transform dot position to our hit info dot point and once that is all complete uh, our tower uh, once we set the tower to place it's going to be instantiated into the world and for every frame we our current placing tower exists within the space uh, we are going to be setting its position to a raycast that is shot from our mouse uh, into world space onto our scene so we can move our tower around and place it in a spot where we'd like now we need a way to finalize the position of the tower and to do that what we do right after we set the position of our tower here we're going to do if input dot get mouse button down zero and this detects if we click our left mouse button and inside of here we're going to set our current placing tower to null and that is all there is for uh, placing towers or at least the basics of it uh, later in this video we're going to go over registering the tower into our game loop manager and all that type of stuff so uh, now if we go back into unity to test this real quick we go and assign our camera to our tower placement script and onto our test place button we go to onto our button component here and in the on click unity event uh, field we're going to hit the plus we're going to attach our player game object to the object field and attach it to our tower placement start tower to place and within the game object field we're going to put in our basic tower now if we just quickly hit save and we run the game and we hit and we click on the place tower button you'll now see that we have a tower in our scene and it moves around based off of our mouse position and it may feel weird that when we have a tower out and we move around our mouse our camera also moves with it so we can change this with a, a simple little control that we add to our player movement so on our player game object and on our player movement script if we go to our move player camera all you have to do is put all of this code here inside of an if statement checking if we are pressing the right mouse button get mouse button one and what this will do is it will only move our camera with based off of our input if our right mouse button is down so now if we go back into unity and we hit play you can now see we have to hold down our right mouse button in order to move our camera and this makes placing towers much much easier we can place towers that's co all cool 
but we're able to place towers inside of each other and we're going to fix this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our basic tower prefab and on the root game object we're going to add a box collider. And we're going to quickly edit this so it fits around our tower and maybe a little bit um, a little bit of extra space around it so we can put space around our towers. So just moving the offset by 0.5 for me worked pretty well. You could see there's some extra space so you can't clutter a bunch of towers in one spot. And yeah, so this collider is all good now. And what we're going to do now is on the tag, we're going to put the can't place tag. So we cannot place any towers on our uh, on itself. So now what we're going to do is go to overrides, apply the prefab changes. And as you can see, it reloaded our pre tower prefab in our towers folder. So now we can delete our basic tower instance in our scene. And now we're going to go back into our tower placement script so we can apply the effect of where we cannot place on any object that has the can't place tag on it. So in order to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to create a raycast hit variable uh, within our uh, current placing tower if statement here. So it's going to be completely separate. So raycast hit and call this uh, hit info. And what we're going to do is instead of having the variable or instead of having our raycast function in here uh, creating its own variable, we're just going to simply pass this in. And there you go. And now since structs cannot be null, a way we can check if we actually have a hit, a hit object is in our if input .get, get mouse button down if we do and and we put hit info dot collider dot game object does not equal to null so this is a good way to check if we actually have a hit info what we're going to do is create another if statement in our uh, if statement and this will contain uh, a comparison for the tag so hit info dot collider dot game object dot compare tag and we look for the can't place tag and we put our current placing tower equals null inside of this if statement. Now what we're going to do is put a layer mask on our physics.raycast function so we can control uh, what our raycast here will be able to hit. So to do that we're going to create a serialized field of private layer mask and we're going to call this placement collide mask. And what we're going to do now we're just going to simply copy this and put it after the range of our raycast. And there you go. This is all set up. Now what we have to do is set something up onto our tower. So let's go back to Unity to do that real quick. All right, so back in Unity, we're going to take our basic tower prefab out and we're going to assign it a layer. So to do that, we're going to click on our layer here, click on add layer. And to the first user layer you can find, we're going to set it to towers. and once we have that set up, we can then assign the towers layer, and there you go. And one more thing, make sure you, uh, your collider's a bit above the ground, not just uh, clean on the ground, because this will count as a collision when we do our little checkbox. So put it maybe 0 0.01 or 0 0.02 above the ground. And don't forget to apply all the changes. So we don't really need to do anything else with the towers, so we can simply delete this uh, from our scene and go back to our script for some more changes. And one more thing we're going to add is another uh, serialized private layer mask. And this is uh, going to be called the placement check mask. And this uh, layer mask will be used for when we uh, uh, press mouse one when we actually have a current placing tower. This will be used to help us finalize uh, if it's good for the tower to be placed in the spot we it is given. Another thing now we're going to put an exclamation point behind our hit info dot cloud game object dot compare tech camp place to check if the object we're hitting does not have the camp place tag so we can actually place on it. And we're also going to do a physics check uh, called a check box to or check cube to ensure that our tower is not going to be intersecting with any other uh, colliders. So to do this, 
uh, we're going to simply create another if statement since this line can be pretty long and we're going to put in physics dot check box and inside it's going to take in the center and that will be the hit info dot collide hit info and you can see that it takes in a center so this line can also be pretty long so we're going to separate this also so we're going to create a vector 3 and call this box center and this will be the hit info dot collide dot game object and this will be the current placing tower dot game object dot position dot transform dot position and we're going to add onto um, and we're going to add the uh, towers box collider offset so to do that we're going to need a reference to our towers box collider so to do this we just do box collider call this tower collider and set this to current placing tower dot game object dot get component box collider now that we have a reference to our tower collider we can now uh, add its offset to our box center so tower collider dot center and now we're going to need to get the half extents and as you can see it's right over here it's basically the size divided by two so to get that we just do vector three call this half extents equals the tower collider dot size divided by two and there you go now what we're going to do is take the box center put it as the first parameter the half extents as the second parameter and for the uh, rotation we could set that to quaternion dot identity now one very last thing we're going to add now is we're going to set the tower collider to trigger so dot is trigger equals true and the reason why we're doing this is because whenever we are using the checkbox function uh, we can modify it to whether it will have to check for uh, trigger colliders or not and we don't want the checkbox if we checking for our own collider which would uh, cause us to not even be able to place a tower at all so we're going to take our placement check mask and we're going to put it into our layer mask here and we're going to put in query trigger action ignore and this means it will ignore all trigger colliders and once we finish placing our tower we can then set the trigger to false before we completely uh, set our current placing tower to null so now if we go back into unity and we set up our placement check and collide mask so we select our player here and we set our placement check mask to everything and for our placement collide mask, we're also going to set to everything, but we're going to take off the towers. So the collide mask, once again, is going to be for our ray cast, and the check mask is used for um, the actual physics.checkbox function. And yeah, this should all be good. Now if we go and hit play, and we place down a tower, you can see we can now place down towers. And we can't place towers within each other. You can see I am trying to click down and I can't place a tower but I can place it uh, around any anywhere else and there you go that is placing towers uh, for our tower defense game in unity in the next video we're going to be focusing on targeting systems and after that we're going to go over damaging enemies in three different ways so stay tuned for that and I'll see you in the next video goodbye